So we left off with this equation for reflection off of a spherical mirror, which was 1 over s plus 1 over s prime equals 2 over r. This is 1 over the object distance plus 1 over the image distance is equal to 2 over the radius of curvature. And we played around with it by taking r to infinity and seeing what that meant physically and mathematically. And I want to emphasize that this is a technique that physicists use instinctively all the time. Given an equation, what would it mean for a particular quantity to be infinity, or zero, or negative, or complex? Remember this, it's an essential technique for every physicist or STEM student. You could just play around with equations and think about what does it mean physically, what does it mean mathematically. Um, interesting results come out when you blow equations up in that way. So let's implement the technique one more time. What if s was very, very large? Right? Large enough compared to the image distance and the radius of curvature that it can essentially be considered to be infinite. What does this mean? First physically and then mathematically. And this isn't just amusing, it's going to arrive us somewhere, so don't worry. So what sort of situation does this describe? Well, physically, this means that the object is very, very far away. For instance, like a star. Also, it means that we can pretty much take all incoming rays from this object that hit our spherical mirror to be arriving parallel to each other, right? Because if you have a star, and you're over here on Earth, I guess Earth is mostly water, and you have a little telescope, Right? It's so far away that yes, there are rays, you know, emanating or radiating out in all directions, but the ones that make it all the way to your telescope, they are virtually parallel. You can consider them to be virtually parallel. The difference in the angle that they started out with is so incredibly tiny, you can consider them to be parallel. So, um, what does it mean now? Mathematically, what does this mean for our equation? How does taking s to infinity change our equation? Well, uh, it leaves us with one over oops, one over s prime is equal to two over r. In other words, s prime, the image distance, is equal to one half the radius of curvature. So evidently, it means that the image distance becomes half of the radius of curvature. In other words, all of the incoming parallel rays reflect off the concave spherical mirror and converge or intersect at a focal point, f, which is halfway between the center of curvature and the vertex. Right? So focal point. Usually written with a... Uh, with a, a cursive f there. And um, that focal point is at a very specific point. So if you have your curved mirror here, center of curvature of that mirror will say is there, and the vertex is there, uh, because this is the radius. Halfway in that point, that must be the focal point. Right? So before, we were saying there's some spherical aberration because if you had a, a point object, right, and rays are coming not parallel to your mirror, they don't all reflect back at that focal point. Uh, the ones with small angles do, but the ones that are wider, they kind of don't. But now what we're saying is, if we're forgetting all of that with a close object, and it's a really, really far object, so that all the rays are coming in completely parallel to each other, well, in that case, then, they do all converge at a specific point, right? They do all converge at this very specific focal point. And that's why we can define it as a focal point very precisely. Because mathematically, that's what it works out to be. That the image distance is always the same, regardless of the angle. And so we get this formulation of our object image uh, relationship for a spherical mirror to be 1 over s plus 1 over s prime equal to 1 over f, right? Because the focal point is the same for the surface regardless of uh, 
how the rays are, are coming in. It's just we found that based on analyzing parallel rays coming in, right? And so uh, focal point is something that is fixed to the geometry of the spherical mirror. And so we can rewrite our object image uh, distance relationship in terms of the focal point, um, which is how it's most often written. Even though for a close object, it, they wouldn't all converge at the focal point. It just gives you where it would if the rays were coming exactly parallel. That's kind of how it works. Next, we'll talk about image of an extended object, which you may have predicted was coming. <laughs>